Today I'm looking at the Blue Eddy AC180. This is an 1800 watt and 1152 watt hour solar generator. I'm primarily going to charge this through AC and that's because I can get about 1000 on standard or about 1400 watts on turbo. And this is much better than the 500 watts of DC input from solar. I already have 1000 watts of solar but this is connected to my EcoFlow Delta Pro. And so I'm going to charge the AC180 from the Delta Pro uh, and that way I can take advantage of the full 1000 watts across my complete system. I also have a portable solar panel that is rated at 120 watts and I was able to connect this easily using the MC4 adapter that came with the AC180 and I was able to get between 80 and 90 watts depending on the angle that I was holding the panel. Wireless charging works really well. I was able to get the full rated 15 watts of output. The only concern I might have is the temperature. Uh, it's possible that with extended use um, both either the phone or the AC180 might get a little bit warm so just keep an eye on that while you're using it. I use a water kettle many times throughout the day. It pulls about 1500 watts and I'm able to boil one liter of water using about 5 to 7 percent of the battery capacity. I decided to try using the water kettle and a toaster at the same time. The toaster uses around 800 watts, water kettle 1500, so this is going to push its limits at around 2400. And as you can see here, when I turn this on, it doesn't quite work out. So this will go into overload almost immediately. Uh, it does hold on for a few seconds, but not enough to actually use either appliance. Uh, so when this happens, all you have to do is just hold down the AC button, it'll turn off the inverter, and then turn it back on and everything's back to normal and you can use it again. In this scenario, the power lifting feature would be a great thing to try because it can take you up to 2700 watts for pure resistive loads like heaters. I put this to the test and enabled the power lifting mode, uh, started the water kettle, and then started the toaster and was very surprised to see that the power output was capped at just under 1800 watts. And so and with the power lifting, it modifies the voltage so that it can increase the amperage without exceeding the total power limit of the device. A lot of my tools run on the Ego battery system and I charge it quite commonly, especially during the day when I'm outside working. And so being able to charge uh, these batteries with solar is going to be a great benefit. The AC180 had no trouble keeping up with the microwave oven for 30 seconds at just under 2000 watts. I have a dust collector with a 20 amp plug. Uh, this unfortunately was not able to work. Uh, whenever I started the motor, it immediately turned off with an overload. There was no trouble at all with a 15 amp table saw that surged to over 2500 watts at startup. No trouble at all for a 15 amp shop vac. A 15 amp spiral benchtop planer worked great. It is possible to charge an EV, but you may need to use a ground neutral bonded plug and this will signal to the charge controller that it's safe to charge the EV from your AC-180. I also did a capacity test, and I started this by first boiling with some water, and then I moved over to a much smaller load of about 400 watts. That's just some network equipment and desktop computers. I was able to get 0.99 kilowatt hours, and this works out to 86% efficiency on the AC inverter. Overall, I'm extremely pleased with the AC-180. After all of my testing, I've decided this thing's really going to keep up with everything that I need it to do. It's portable, it's lightweight, and I look forward to many years of using this uh, around my property and throughout my home with the long life cycle battery.